All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, continuing elimination. Uh, we'll solve a couple more systems, and just the work gets a little tougher. Um, just, you know, it's more things to do, basically. And so in the first one, uh, we have our system, and we begin by asking ourselves, what do we want to eliminate? And so how about uh, we go ahead and eliminate Y. Let's start with that. And so now that I've decided that, I have to make sure that these two... Uh, coefficients are opposites. Well again the good news is is the signs are opposites, right? We're subtracting or adding, but the bad news is is we have a 5 and a 2. So they're not quite opposites. So easy fix, we'll multiply basically that top equation by 2 and we'll multiply that bottom equation by 5 and that creates the new situation. We get 4x minus 10y equals 12. We get 15x plus 10y equals 50, uh, 30 actually, sorry about that, right? Because we're multiplying this side by five as well. So when we're said and done here, the y's cancel out like I designed them to. 4x and 15x is 19x, 12 and 30 gives us a 42. So dividing by x, excuse me, dividing by 19, we get a very, very nasty value of 42 over 19. So trust me, right? You don't want to take that value and go plug it back in there to find x or to find y, right? What we want to do is start over again. Right? And this time eliminate x. Much easier to do that than pushing that nasty fraction around. So, right? So what do we want to do here? Well, again, I need these to be opposites. So they're both positive 2 and 3. So just throw a negative in there. So how about we multiply the first guy right, on both sides by negative 3, and we multiply the bottom by 2. So that's going to create a new system. right? We get negative 6x plus 15y equals negative 18. Right? So that's multiplying that by negative 3. For this one, we get 6x uh, plus 4y equals 12. So again, by design, the x's cancel out. 15y and 4y is what we call 19y. Negative 18 and 12 gives us negative 6. So divide by 19, and we get our solution for y. So our ordered pair that solves this system, right, it's not a pretty one, but that's the ordered pair that makes that situation true. 42 over 19, and negative 6 over 19. And again, we use that using the elimination method, and that's about as hard as it's going to be. Uh, we had to multiply both equations by something to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish, right? The variable I was trying to get rid of, the coefficients are negatives, right? That's the goal, and we do what we have to do using our multiplication property of equality to get there, right? So last one. Uh, again, uh, going through the work, we have to figure out who do I want to get rid of. Right, so how about I just go ahead and get rid of x first? So in getting rid of x, right, uh, what I have is 2 and negative 4. So they're opposite sign, but they're not opposites. So pretty easy to fix that. We'll just multiply both sides by 2. And so that creates a new situation, right? We have 4x minus 6y equals 12. And on this side, we have minus 4x plus 6y equals negative 12. And then when we combine like terms, it turns out that everybody cancels, right? We end up with 0 equals 0, right? So what does this mean? Well, what it means is we don't have 1, so there's no, uh, there's not one unique solution, right? For example, the other three that I have on here they're all consistent, but they all have one unique ordered pair, right? This is the only ordered pair that solves that system. This was the only ordered pair that solved this one. This is the only ordered pair that solves that one. So this one is saying that there is a solution. So we, we are actually consistent here, all right? But the system doesn't have one unique solution. Uh, what was basically happening here is that this line here, and this line here are basically the same line. All right, and so the solution 
if we just take any one of those equations, and I'll prove this to you in a moment, if we just solve for y, right, so negative 2x minus 2x, negative 3y equals negative 2x plus 6. Divide both sides by negative 3, we get y equals negative 2 thirds x minus 2, right? If we did the other equation, look what happens, right? Solving for y, I'd add 4x to both sides. We get 6y equals 4x plus 12. Divide everybody by 6, and we end up with y equals 2 thirds x. Uh, oops, I think I messed up somewhere. Uh, that's a negative 12, yeah. So it's a negative 12, 2 thirds, that should be a minus 2, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Sorry about that. So you'll notice that for each one, the y, right, is the same. It's 2 thirds x minus 2. So they're basically the same line. So our solution, right, this is what we call consistent, but also dependent, because my y value depends on what x is. So I tell you what x is. If x is 0, y is going to be negative 2, right? If x is 3, y is going to end up being 0. If x is 6, right, uh, 12, 4, we get 2. So there's not one unique solution. There's actually several of them, any point that solves that line. So the way we write this answer is varied, but in an ordered, ordered pair form, right, x can be whatever it wants to be, but y has to be 2 thirds x minus 2. So that's actually how I write it in ordered pair form. x can be whatever I want, but y is dependent on x with that. Um, sometimes they have a set builder notation, whatever the case might be. Uh, these systems are consistent, but they are what we call independent. So most of the things that we've solved have been independent because the value for x and y do not depend on one or the other, right? They're independent of each other. Here, x is negative 1 and, x, and y is negative 6. So there, there is a solution consistent, but it's independent. Some systems, when you have a thing that's always true, right, are what we call a dependent system, meaning that it does have a solution, but there's actually an infinite number of them, all right? Because, again, you just uh, let x be any number, plug it in here, you have the corresponding y. So I have an infinite number of possibilities to solve that equation. And that kind of wraps up elimination. So, so far, so good. What we've been working on is two by two systems. So now what we need to do is go work on a three by three system. And how do we do that using substitution elimination? A lot more work, a lot more math. Obviously, some more videos coming soon. See you guys then.